Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the fourth edition of IMA Gator 21, brought to you by Games 24-7. Now, let me uh, introduce you to our moderator, Mr. Kanishk Mohan. He's the associate partner from Red Sea. And for the speaker, we have Mr. Adarsh Nair. He's the chief product and experience officer from Bharti Airtel and CEO from Airtel Digital. Over to you, Kanishk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shivani. Um, I'll, I'll first do a quick introduction about uh, our guest, Mr. Adarsh Nair. Um, Mr. Adarsh Nair is the CEO of Airtel Digital, and he's responsible for Airtel's digital business, which includes Airtel Ads, a homegrown advertising tech platform, um, Airtel IQ, a cloud communication platform, Wink, of course, the music platform, and Xtreme, uh, the equivalent video streaming platform. He was earlier the chief product and experience officer for Airtel, uh, where he led the product vision and strategy across B2C and B2B products, uh, and also guided the customer experience for Airtel's more than 300 million customers, 2,000 enterprise businesses, and 1 million SMBs. Welcome, Mr. Nair. It's a, it's a pleasure to be sharing the platform with you. Thanks, Kanishka. Um, a bit about myself, right? And, and I'll set some context um, for this uh, for this entire fireside session. Um, I am an associate partner with Redsia, a leading internet consulting firm in India. Uh, we have done some groundbreaking work across consumer internet domains, um, and with the recent rising trend on gaming. Uh, we have also done some in-depth work on uh, overall fantasy games and in particular, some hardcore games and, and mid-core games and the rise, rising trend thereof, thereof. I myself have been an avid, but an, a, a, a slightly unsuccessful gamer, right? From Prince of Persia to Max Payne to Crisis, right? Uh, I've spent hours and hours just staring at screens. Um, most recently, I think it was PUBG for me, which which just occupied me for, I think, six months straight. Right, and and um, with games have become much more lifelike recently, right? And also some of these advanced graphics, which 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 at least when I was a kid, we used to play games, um, are now readily available on, on even budget smartphones, right? And the internet has made multiplayer gaming an everyday option, right? For example, when I was a kid, we had this game and I, and I wasn't even sure what, what this multiplayer option is for, right? Um, but now it, it's just everywhere. Right, and, and to that extent, the presence of 4G and 5G, right, are only expected to accelerate this trend of mobile gaming and uh, sharing experiences online. Uh, Mr. Nair, what, how, how exactly is Airtel, uh, or how central is gaming to Airtel strategy with, with the imminent 5G launch? No, that's a great question. So, you know, when you think about gaming, uh, at least from Airtel's perspective, we come at it from the perspective of consumer engagement. So when we first got into music five years ago and then video after, the purpose was where are the consumers? What are they doing? That is an adjacency to the telco. So we're in the connectivity business, right? So we've got 4G, 5G is coming. We've got broadband. So these uh, engagement constructs uh, are very adjacent to it. And we see our customers engaging with music and video, hence we invested in those areas. Gaming is the next frontier. And if you look at any survey worldwide, including India, you can see the time spent on gaming going up. In fact, uh, if you look at the next generation, it's really difficult to understand where they are watching videos because most of the videos that they are watching are game streams. They're no longer watching your regular, I would say, Disney movies, right? And uh, this is something I see with my kids too all the time. So. Where the consumer goes, Airtel believes we also need to uh, be close to it. So from that perspective, gaming is very critical. Now, 
how do we think about gaming? There's of course many avenues. I'll share a few here and we can go into the details later. Uh, there is a construct of cloud gaming. So here is a place where the network and uh, you know technology such as cloud and the games itself, they come closer together. It's got a huge opportunity to democratize gaming. We'll get into that later. So that's a clear area of focus for us. It's something we want to enable. It's something we may even consider getting deeper into, even including the, the technology that powers cloud gaming. So that's definitely one area. The uh, second area that would obviously be very interesting is the community of gamers. So, you know, with, with music and Wink, we've got about 80, 90 million users who's now closer to Etel because we have the Wink app. Now, what would be a similar community engagement model for gamers where Etel can help the gaming community? That would be something we'll be seriously considering. And uh, I do believe our focus would be a little bit on the hard to mid core gaming, because that's probably where some investments are required from the network itself to enable a better gaming experience. So these are some of the early thoughts that we have, but happy to go into more detail over the, the duration of this uh, uh, meeting. Wow, so so you you provided me with multiple starting points, Mr. Nair. Thank you. But I think you one of the most interesting points that you picked up was this thing about hardcore and uh, mid-core games, right? So uh, what our research also suggests is that casual games today, while they comprise the majority of the downloads, still contribute to only about fifteen percent of revenues. Right. Um, the rest of it, of course, right, real money gaming is a major contributor to the entire scheme of things. Uh, but another major money grosser tends to be hardcore games. Right. Um, when you compare, say, the most downloaded games versus the most uh, top grossing games, uh, even on even on a Google Play Store, it's fairly apparent that the hardcore games tend to generate more engagement right uh, and consequently more investment uh, on behalf of the players right both in terms of time as well as uh, money people love spending on buying fancy clothes for their uh, gaming avatar and, <laughs> and uh, you know they're just speeding accelerating your progress through the game itself right and and to that extent um, the the other big manifestation of this entire engagement tends to be esports, right? But the point that you mentioned about um, uh, live streamers gaining uh, immense amount of traction on platforms such as YouTube, Twitch, right? Uh, and and you have also had these sponsored events um, with with gaming, uh, which, which sponsor these professional gamers, right? And and people are thinking increasingly about um, uh, about about having careers in gaming, right? Uh, being a professional gaming ga gamer is an option that you can have a real conversation with your parents about. Um, so so is is Airtel doing like any any specific activity around? uh esports live streaming i think this, this these are two important themes that you touched upon with having a ready customer base available uh via wink and uh, extreme yeah no and that's there's a lot of different things you touched upon so let me let me first answer your question so is Apple doing anything about live streaming yes our extreme platform today supports live streaming so if you look at it on the music side we stream live concerts and uh, that product is called Game Stage. So the same Wing Stage. So that the technology that's powering it, you could imagine a future where game live streaming is a focus area for us. Now, um, how we'll go about it? Uh, how are we going to actually go help the gaming community around it? These plans are being devised as we speak. But live streaming, whether it be a partnership or it be a direct investment, is an area where we will definitely be getting into. Uh, and the approach we are taking is how do we get the gamer community involved? How can this be uh, an incremental help to the gamer community would be the lens that we'll be wearing when we get into uh, that aspect. On the consumer side, as, as we rightly called out, having content on extreme, which is connected to game live streaming is a no-brainer. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a live stream. It just has to be a game stream. It could be you know, a particular game that was played by a couple of professionals that now is being watched by an audience. That part is a no-brainer. It fits right into the extreme uh, video strategy. So that's one. 
The second question that you've called out, which is gaming as a profession. Uh, we're seeing the green shoots in India around this theme. In some Western markets, I think it's already a reality. There are sponsorships, big sponsorships that's coming the way of the top gamers. We're talking about Olympics for uh, esports. So I do believe that's catching on fast in India. We've got a very young mobile population that is gaming. And because of that, I mean, we have a unique market in gaming. Right? We are the largest mobile gaming country in the world. So keeping that in mind, I do believe that as a profession, uh, this is definitely going to emerge. So the top 1% of gamers will probably take it up as a profession. And there are great uh, initiatives all over the country, you know, things led by Nordwin, things led by the India Today group. They're all kind of helping this kind of an ecosystem kind of thrive. And we've done a few brand sponsorships in the area already. So from that perspective, we are associating ourselves with some of these motions. How can we get involved in a larger way? It probably has to be from the education angle. Because even though we do believe a few of the top gamers are now rising to the top, there is no structured ladder to go from being an amateur gamer today into a pro gamer. So there needs to be technology, platforms, universities that is supporting this, this, this particular path to being a top gamer. That is an area where we do believe we have some role to play and we are firming up the plans on how we can actually help out. That, that's super interesting, Mr. Nair. Um, and, and I think the other aspect, right, where I think a lot of players and investment seems to be flowing in this direction, right? Um, you have the, of course, uh, the, the telecom uh, industry putting their weight behind gaming, right, with, with 5G, et cetera. You also have OEMs uh, who sponsor these events. Um, you have these, um, even some of these consumer brands, right? So Disney, Hotstar, et cetera, they are also trying to just latch on to some of these rising themes. Um, B, I think the other point that you also made was on this whole regulatory and, and you know, enabling the ecosystem aspect where I think a lot of work is, is still underway, right? While there are a few courses which, which specifically offer formal degrees in not exactly gaming, but fields related to gaming, right? So you've got visual effects and, and graphics and animator, animation degrees coming up, but they're still far and few between, right? With, with career options yes. uh, still getting created. Um, but I think the other big positive direction, the step in this direction is probably how a lot of um, investment funds, VCs and PEs are throwing their money behind um, behind this, right? And, and which has also resulted in a lot of corporate activity. So with Nazara's IPO and, you know, some, some of uh, the MPLs and Dream 11s of the world becoming big unicorns or on the way of way to become a unicorn very quickly, right? Yeah. Uh, and your next breed of or next range of uh, unicorns is also under preparation, right? So it, it, there is a lot of, uh, the, buzz, the ecosystem is buzzing with activity, which, which we believe is going to be leading to a lot of employment opportunities um, in our mind, the the gaming industry today employs about 40,000 people. We expect this is going to go up to about 100,000 over the, by 2025, right? Which, is, which means there are going to be 50,000 additional jobs getting created and the talent pool to service that demand is basically just available with, say, among the general uh, IT population, no, no expertise is available yet. Right? Is, does that seem to be a challenge with, with you yourself when you are formulating your gaming strategies? The fact that there is limited talent, limited knowledge, limited information available on the ecosystem? So, you know, I um, have a different point of view on this, right? So two parts, there is developing technology platforms and then there is developing games. So like publishers, right, who are making games. On the developing platforms connected to gaming technology, I think we have a surplus of talent because we've got lots of engineers, uh, we've got good product talent that's coming into the country, uh, that's being trained within the country. Irrespective, I think that part, separate story, I think it's being taken care of. 
then comes the core question of game publishing you know the, the physics engine that is powering the games how do you code to that see the, the interesting thing about india is a lot of the biggest gaming shops all across the world take zynga for example they have their studios here so there is talent here mid to junior level talent in india who's actually powering many of the most famous games that you see all over the world now i will agree some of the biggest studios they are completely abroad but not to say the talent does not exist in india what is needed is a few tenure leaders who can actually guide the younger teams to actually go make productions happen and the fascinating thing that i'm seeing this whole last year is these companies are emerging and as you rightly con- uh, called it out uh, there are funds right now that is focused on gaming they are bringing money into the country which is now allowing founders to actually build gaming startups i recently talked to a company who is building an esports uh, level game in cricket and that's the first of its kind there is a multiple real money gaming companies that is uh, started out in india it's not deployed globally so engineering here but uh, deployed globally and making money internationally so i do believe the next 5 years you're going to see great companies emerge in the gaming space within india with home grown talent just like the it revolution is going to the tech revolution i do think it will come into the game publishing revolution and with 5g ar vr it will become unavoidable so i'm not too worried about that i think it's taking its natural cycle next 5 years will be very interesting interesting and i think like another point that you made was 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 very very relevant is the fact that increasingly we will need to build for india itself right and and the fact that it will be made in india is i think a natural outcome of that uh, or maybe it's a chicken and egg it's hard to say which comes first uh, but but there is a great trend right of of these even these arcade games so there are kite flying games and kancha games and uh, people are building very very games for topical themes right which games themes which are based on elections and uh, some which are very very regional in nature for example you have games related to jallikattu right so i think that that's the other big theme that i probably see emerging right uh, with the next set of users coming from rural india like i think there will be a unique set of development challenges um and i think that the government is also doing its bit to be making sure that we have a flourishing ecosystem right so you've got the digital villages um of course digital india as a macro theme in itself right make in india etc etc um we 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 certainly hope for a very very bright decade ahead for gaming it um anything specifically that that adel is doing to to address any of these uh newer segments in gaming and 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 before i just hand it over right one one very interesting insight that just i i recalled uh was the fact that i think there is also this entrenched archetype of you know the male gamer right uh i think that's also an archetype that really needs to break um i think more than 40% of gamers in india by the way tend to be women right which for me personally was a very very uh eye opening statistic fair enough i mean so you know that that statistic portion if you look at facebook games 10 years ago right uh most of the gamers were women and that was a big revelation for a lot of the advertisers when they first started so it's not surprising uh i think games are democratic it can be played by men or women i don't see a, a bias it just depends on the type of games too if you have a first person shooter maybe there's a little bit of bias for for males to play that right but as games are getting democratized lots of new themes are emerging i do believe it, it, there is some game for everybody and therefore i do expect equal participation old young men women so that that statistics part i do believe gaming democratizes it doesn't it doesn't create bias um your larger question on regionalization localization see we've already seen this in music and video in india it's one of the toughest markets to build content for because you make a english movie if it has to be really popular it has to be localized you have to you have to actually go dub it in various different languages and only then will you uh, be able to send it throughout india 
So in our music group and video group, there's a lot of time being spent on how do you make sure that we're getting the content that is right for the region. So one is, you know, you build for that region, you build for that local taste. And the other is you take content that works for everybody and then you dub it or whatever, and then you send it to everybody. So this same concept will come through in gaming too. And, and the fun part about that is, see the gaming engines, you can build it once, but it's a skin that matters, right? So if you have a simple game that, uh, you know, let's take Angry Birds, for example, that's a physics engine that is powering that game. You change the Angry Bird into a different character that maybe a local population, uh, population can understand better, then probably they'll be more amenable to playing that game. So there is that aspect of it. But the other interesting aspect of it is truly India first games that is rising. I mean, if you look at Ludo, I've not seen like a Ludo craze. If, if you say, look at America, there's no Ludo craze there, but in India, like the whole country is playing Ludo. So that aspect of understanding our culture and the games we used to play physically and converting that to online games, I think that's that's something that India is doing well and I expect to see a lot more about it. So Jalikata, I didn't know that there was a game around it, but makes sense. That would probably work well in that region, right? So this part is going to be very exciting. And I do believe we are just beginning. Like, you know, now when I talk to founders who are building gaming companies, you can see how deeply they're thinking about the Indian population. And they're very clear that this is a market where long term, there could be huge monetization wins. And therefore, they are building content for India. And those games are India first. Maybe they'll go global, but they're not thinking global yet. They're thinking India first. So as this trend emerges, uh, I do think it will create a flourishing ecosystem of supporting ecosystems, whether it is, you know, FX designers, whether it is engineers who are able to build games better, uh, even core IP around physics engines that are required to build some of these games. All this can emerge in India. And we are already seeing that green shoots come. And from the perspective of Airtel, one aspect is we would love to invest in these companies. So we have our own uh, investment fund that actually um, invests in companies that are adjacent to the telco. And as I mentioned earlier, gaming definitely is. So that'll be one area where we want to encourage some of these young companies partnering with other VC funds uh, so that they have a lifeline in India and they grow. And you give it five years, you can see a thriving ecosystem around this. No, absolutely. I think the the other important bit probably to add on to of all of this, where I think, you know, players such as Airtel will probably play a deeper role, right? The way you're talking about it, I think there's a there's a technology and platform layer and on top of that, you have this entire ecosystem which is built in, right? And and the way we look at some of the uh, the the future of gaming, right? We expect there is going to be immense uh, innovation at at both ends, right? Especially on the technology slide, when you when you and I think one of the themes that you earlier talked about, where I think cloud computing and and the way edge computing is happening. Um, I think there, there are already startups which are talking about gaming happening on the browsers entirely, right? With, with this, all of this processing happening on the cloud, um, which I think is just the first manifestation. And, and I would guess that Airtel should probably end up looking at enabling the entire ecosystem. Uh, the focus will probably be on the um, platform and the platform side of things. Yes. I mean, so the whole, uh, the whole investments around 5G, I think that as you, as you are probably reading the news, uh, this year is all going to be about those investments so that some of these 5G scenarios are going to come to life very soon. And we recently announced a quick demo in terms of how cloud, cloud gaming could look. Uh, and see the, the fascinating thing about uh, 5G and gaming. I want to just lay it out so that everybody understands how fun this is going to be. Uh, the first thing is around latency. Today, one of the biggest reasons why gaming is not democratized, and what do I mean by that? Somebody who's sitting on a 3 lakh PC connected to a broadband, and when they game, and they're competing with somebody who is on a, let's say, a less specced device, a less powerful device, on a 4G uh, connection, this is not equal turf. So the person sitting on that more expensive device on broadband is going to win because there's going to be latency in how the shoots are happening, how the kills are happening. The minute 5G comes in, you're going to democratize this. The latency on mobile is going to be better 
than probably what you see on broadband today. So that's going to be the first change. Second, multiplayer. You've got friends playing. The coordination between certain groups who's fighting another group, that's also going to get a lot better because 5G is going to be able to support this. So it's going to democratize the world in terms of now everybody's fighting on an equal footing. And how much money you have probably is becoming less critical in a world where 5G exists and cloud gaming exists. So that is one. The, um, the cloud part is also important for another reason. <clears throat> Today, if you look at it, the phones itself, you know, gamers talk a lot about buying this 50K phone because then it comes with all the right specs that's going to enable them to win. While some of that hardware is important, in cloud gaming, a lot of the processing is happening in the cloud. So the, the intense graphical processing that is required to render the game, much of it can be happening on the cloud and it's only the stream that's hitting the phone, allowing you to also game, AAA game, on a lower end device. So when you see all this happening, you can imagine you can imagine how many people in India can actually participate on an equal footing. And I kid you not, you know, being in the telecom business, we have customers everywhere. So a couple of years ago, I was in Dharavi. And, and some of our most premium customers are right there. Because the mobile phone is their entertainment device. They watch the videos there. They play their games there. They buy the biggest data plans from us. And you can see kids sitting in the corners and actually gaming on their mobile phones. For all of them, 5G will democratize gaming. So this is a very, very big development for a country like India where mobile game is dominating. So it's going to be a lot of fun. That's number one. The other part that's also going to be interesting is certain high-end gaming aspects that is today not easy, easily seen on mobile, like AR and VR. Those constructs are now going to be native. And that's going to work on those same phones that we talked about, democratized for everybody to handle. So the experience is going to get much richer in terms of what kind of games you're able to play. So both these things are going to come with 5G and cloud playing together. So it's very exciting times. And then you can imagine how much innovation now, you know, all these, all these founders and, and engineers can actually do now with all these new levers available um, at their disposal. So that aspect, I think as a telecom company, uh, it's super exciting for us to basically put the backbones in so that all this innovation can be built on top. And we would also love to partake in some of that innovation whether it be a platform that supports cloud gaming, whether it be a game publishing platform that allows uh, faster distribution of games, all these are open opportunities for somebody like Airtel to go partner and, and make it kind of easier for gamers to enjoy games in India. No, totally, as I, as I mentioned right at the beginning, right, you can see my, sport, my games chair. I, I am looking forward to 5G. <laughs> So this has been a fantastic session, uh, Mr. Nayan. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I think uh, we are running on the clock now. Um, so it, it, it's been a pleasure having you. I think the larger insight or larger takeaways uh, for the ecosystem um, revolve around the fact that a, it is important enough to be identifying the fact that there is the forward-looking trend for, for the entire uh, gaming is about the democratization of hardware and the uh, the massification of entertainment and media, which was earlier available only to the uh, top end of the income pyramid. Right. So there's there certainly the the ecosystem is rich for innovation, is uh, and and there the fortunately the ecosystem is also becoming diverse enough with with companies and startups raising funding across the board. Uh, and not just to service India, but also to take Indian products abroad, right? So, so we look forward, the, the, the next decade is probably going to be one of the most exciting times ever for gaming. And, and we certainly look forward to uh, a lot of these new startups creating breakthrough games. Absolutely. You know, just I want to thank everybody uh, for having me. It's been a it's been a great session. So I was happy I was able to be here and contribute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nair, uh, uh, for your valuable insights on, on the gaming and the entire ecosystem. Thank you, Kanish, for, for your for your thoughts. Uh, it was a wonderful session. Uh, look forward to the other session further i would also like to take this opportunity to thank our partners games 24 7 powered by apps flyer in association with track here 
I would also like to thank our platinum partners, OnePlus, content delivery partner, Limelight Networks, supported by Invest India, knowledge partner, Red Sea. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye now. Thank you.